forecast for Saturday, June 15th. Okay, so we have the moon in Libra all day. So we're very, very hyper-focused on relationships, reconciling those relationships, finding a compromise in those relationships, and finding a little bit of peace and harmony where there's been chaos. We also have to keep in the back of our mind that we're in Gemini season, which is an air sign. Libra energy, also an air sign. The Gemini energy has had us kind of dealing with extremes, very much dealing with extreme options and choices and decisions and opportunities. And the division between those particular choices and option points are very extreme. Now, adding a little bit more confusion to this, the Libra energy is very indecisive. And so, again, the Gemini season is kind of flip-flopping us back and forth, to and fro, up and down, from one option, one choice point to the other. And now with the moon in Libra energy, we are going to be all in, 100%, with one path, one decision, one option, one direction, and then just moments later, scrap that, we're all the way on the opposite end of the spectrum. Now, again, the whole goal of the moon being in Libra and energy is for us to find a common middle ground towards the end of the transit. At the beginning of the transit, which we're very much currently at, we kind of see the up and down, the choppiness, the seesawing a lot more dominant than towards the end of the transit. So with all of that being said, uh, there's six different aspects taking place here today, which is a relatively quiet day in the cosmos. Even weirder than that, Two of the six are going to involve the moon. I can't even remember a time in which we had a quiet day in the cosmos, let alone only two different moon aspects. So again, kind of indicative that we're going to be presented with some issues, some challenges, some obstacles in our inner realm, but also some really great opportunities to kind of see things from a different set of eyes. So before we get into any of the moon aspects, we have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in his rulership in the Gemini energy and, of course, ruling over Gemini season, making a very positive interaction with Pluto. Pluto, of course, the great transformer himself, retrograde in Aquarius energy. So this is air on air action. So again, a lot of thinking, a lot of processing. But this particular interaction is going to help us kind of hone in to pay very special attention to a situation, a circumstance, an idea, new information, new details that's kind of helping us piece together how we're going to get from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. So if this is a project that you're thinking about or a goal of some sort, you're going to have a lot more information kind of pop off to help you figure out, again, the planning process needed in order for us to actually get to that end goal. We're going to be able to see the details a little bit more clearly. Again, just a reminder, we're feeding off of the first quarter moon that just popped off in Virgo energy here on the 14th that kind of set the tone for Mercury and the Sun coming together for their chasm, which of course is a reset, a clarity, if you will, an epiphany, a light bulb moment. So we're taking this domino effect of having the fogginess, the confusion cloud kind of be removed in a certain way. And what's filling that space, that void, is information and details that's going to help us kind of see the bigger, broader picture. So that is going to kind of, I'm going to make us, I'm going to say it's going to make us a little bit obsessed, if I do say so myself, like tunnel vision on a particular project, goal, thought, idea. We're going to be very consumed with the energy, the attention that this particular path, this direction, this objective needs from us at this point in order to get a plan strategized, put together in preparation for the green light go ahead to actually take action and make moves to execute said plan. So then the sun in this Gemini energy going to make a positive interaction with the North Node. The North Node is in Aries energy, trying to get us on the right path to reach our soul's mission, our soul's potential. This is kind of requiring us to be a little bit more of an individual, 
a little bit more on a solo quest, a solo adventure, if you will, which is a very hard thing to swallow with the moon in Libra, seeing as we just want to be connected and attached to and intertwined with other people. And so the sun is illuminating two very different choice points in this Gemini energy. But this interaction with the North Node is showing us the potential of the path that we could be walking alone. And to many people, that still sounds very scary. And if that does scare you, then please step back and take a good look at your attachments to other people. But at this point, we realize that there are certain things that we need to be doing for ourselves by ourselves. And this is kind of where we start getting little glimmers of information and details on what that particular path, what that direction, what that goal may actually look like. The sun is then going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in this Taurus energy, which is going to further push us into understanding the potential of some of the paths, some of the choices, some of the directions that we're currently contemplating, especially where breaking away from certain relationship dynamics doesn't mean that you're breaking up, doesn't mean that you're walking away, doesn't mean that you're ghosting them, doesn't mean that you're not having anything to do with them. It just means tweaking the energetic boundaries. Many people have to do the same thing as their partner, that they have the same gym time, they have to go to the same events together, and so immersed with the other person that they lose their individuality. The whole point of what we're doing here in the year of eight, the whole point of stepping into your creator force energy is to act as the unique individual that you are meant to be. And so that requires a little bit of time, distance, energy, and space from some of the people that we've become a little bit too attached to, too close to, too intertwined with. The sun interacting with Uranus is going to open up a brand new perspective on where it is that the path alone versus the path continuing coupled is definitely very different and going to lead us on a different mission. There is a mission, there is a calling that is getting stronger and stronger as we enter into the solstice energy that requires us to kind of be on our own path and dance to the beat of our own drum. The moon then gets involved with Uranus. So what's interesting here is that the Libra energy that the moon is in and the Taurus energy that Uranus is in, they're both ruled over by Venus. And so this is a heart activation of sorts. Now, the moon in Libra energy, super indecisive. There's a part of us that is really inspired, really excited to break away from these relationship dynamics, to do our own thing, to really get to know ourselves on a different level. However, the ego programming then quickly kicks in and makes us kind of sit in our fears, our doubts, our insecurities on what would actually happen to us if we did dance to the beat of our own drum, if we did break away from doing the same old, same old with the same kind of people. That fear, again, puts into perspective how much of our wants, our needs, our desires, our goals, our dreams we've been putting on the back burner in order to get along and go with the flow with the people around us. So the moon interacting with Uranus is going to open up our heart space to really see where it is that we need a spontaneous change, not only in our external realm, but in our inner realm, first and foremost, to get the heart and head in alignment and prepare to take action and make moves when the green light go ahead really indicates that we should be making some progress on a new path in a new direction. And spoiler alert, we're coming into the very last week of Gemini season where the option the opportunities, the decision points, the choice points that we've been very much deliberating between are going to become much more clear. We're going to have to choose. We're going to have to lean in. We're going to have to align with one over the other as we move through that solstice energy. Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger in this Taurus energy is going to make a positive interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, wisdom in this Gemini energy. So first of all, there's a huge wave of self-confidence rolling in. There's a huge wave of optimism. There's a huge wave of excitement, of inspiration, of determination to do something different. However, Keep in the back of your mind, the Taurus energy that Mars is in is a very low, slow, steady pace. We actually aren't even moving anywhere at this particular point in time. We have to stay still as we kind of allow some of the information and details that are still 
are not available to us to become available to us so that we can be fully informed on the path, on the decision, on the plan of action that Mars is very anxiously awaiting to actually take. Jupiter is magnifying the options, magnifying the opportunities, if you will. But again, in the background, we are excited about one thing until we realize that it's actually possible, it's actually tangible, and then the ego programming kicks in, makes us a little bit fearful, a little bit anxious, a little bit uncertain of what is to come. And then again, with the moon in Libra energy, we have to find that sweet spot. So Mars and Jupiter are bringing in this like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am type of energy. We're all hyped up. We're seeing the greater, grander picture. We're starting to kind of understand the smaller pieces that are needed in order to actually reveal the greater, grander picture of our goals or our end goal, if you will. And we're really starting to, again, cultivate that patience needed at this present moment to let the whirlwind kind of take place around us while we stand very firmly in this present moment, just merely observing what is coming, what is going, what is kind of, I'm going to say, being removed from our plate as far as options are concerned, which is illuminating the more favorable options that are still left on our plate for us to choose from. Now we sit in that for pretty much hours, which is good for us because again, it's a positive interaction. We're talking hours here, the better part of the afternoon from 12.37 p.m. to 4.20 p.m. We're sitting in that building up of energy, that warrior type of spirit, that excitement, that inspiration, that motivation, that determination to actually create something new. Then at 4.20, the last aspect of the day, the moon, in this Libran energy is going to sit across from directly oppose that North node in Aries energy, which also means we're sitting on top of the South node in Libra energy. Again, a reminder, the North node and the South node are the axis of the karmic chapters that the collective is currently learning. We know that because all the eclipses that we've experienced thus far and still to come here in the fall have been on this Aries and Libra and axis. The Aries energy needs us to get to know thyself, to be so self-centered within thyself that we have to really embody and embrace who it is that we are as this unique individual here on the earth plane in order to kind of share our energy imprint the world around us with our unique energetic signature. The South Node is where it is that we're coming from. It's what we have to break away from. The South Node being in Libra and energy is all about the relationship dynamic that we're currently trying to break away from. Does that mean that you're breaking up with your partner? Well, maybe, but not necessarily. Does it mean that you're ghosting people, walking away? Absolutely not. What it means is that the codependent energetic cord that many of us have created in our personal relationships now needs to be broken. We all have to stand on our own two feet. You have to learn how to be an individual while still being a part of a partnership, of a group, of a team, of something greater. And so the moon sitting on top of the south node in Libra and energy, the natural default program is to run back to those that you fought very hard to get away from, is to minimize the boundaries that you've been trying to implement, is to back burner your own wants, needs, and desires in order to give other people power over your life choices. That north node in Aries energy is what we have to lean into, what it is that we have to learn, which is to stand on our own two feet to be an individual, to know thyself so greatly that we would never allow thyself to be overpowered by someone else's energy and intention. So this particular interaction, definitely not gonna feel good. It's gonna want us to revert back to what is old, tried, tested, and true, what is familiar. But of course, the goal here is to run in the opposite direction, jump in a new territory, do something different for yourself. If you're used to saying yes, when you should be saying no, it's time to do reversal day. Up is down, back is forth. We have to make a change. We have to challenge our brain. We have to create new neural pathways in order to kind of bring an ending in a closure to the old programming, the old patterns, the old behaviors, the old situation and circumstance that the old version of self was very comfortable in living in. New version of self, we ain't having it, which means that we have to do something different. This, emotionally speaking, is going to feel like a tug of war 
But of course, with the moon in Libra, it's all about kind of riding the ups and downs of those particular inner scales until, until we find a sweet spot.